one of the things to understand about limerence is that whether or not it is coupled with tr noticeable trauma bonding and whether or not it formed exactly the way that a trauma bond forms, it heals like a trauma bond heals. Just like there's nothing wrong at all with being able to love deeply. There's also nothing at all wrong with being able to be marvelously obsessed with something, to want it deeply. Now, where we want to run into trouble with limerence is that at, when you're dealing with limerence, you can't shut off the obsession. Your ability to self-regulate is not on. It's hijacked. So how do you regain your ability to still have marvelously deep wants, marvelously deep loves, obsessions that lead to uh, major progress, growth, and change while regaining your ability to regulate your emotions and to choose how you act, choose how you feel. Well, that takes going down to what's at the root. And that's, that's easier said than done because it's not exactly what you think about. See, there are certain doorways in to the root of your limerence, all right? And when it comes to what the doorways in will be, they're felt doorways. One of the doorways in to the root of your limerence, if you want to actually renegotiate it at its roots and regain your intentionality, regain your ability to self-regulate, is going to be uh, the pain of not having what you want. A pain that to some extent you deny when you're dealing with that sweet, sweet longing. And so let's consider now, the pain of not having it comes upon you all the time. You might be telling yourself, oh, well, I feel it all the time. It's not helping me. It's not healing me. No, no, the problem is it's coming upon you. And that's why it's keeping you in an oscillating loop instead of healing you. What I'm suggesting that you do is that you feel back to it. And one of the best ways to do that is through the body sensations and sort of your internal proprioceptive GPS system on the inside of you. So let's consider how to do this. So you have a person or a situation that you have this limerence for. When you think about it, there's going to be some sort of pain. As long as it's not overwhelming and you can tolerate it, what I'm going to ask you to do is notice where activity is happening in your body. Some people might ask the question, where does the pain live? It doesn't matter at all if you can find where it lives. It doesn't matter at all if you can find exactly where the traffic padding, pattern or echo is happening in your body when you think about what you want and the pain of not having it. What does matter is that you exert the effort to look for it, to feel back to it, to cradle uh, the, the potential sensation of it in your awareness. So take a moment to breathe deeply, to breathe in deep, to breathe out slow, and to notice as you think about the pain of not having what you want, as long as it's tolerable, uh, look around for where you're feeling the pain. If it seems to be something outside of your body, that's fine. Look for it there. If it seems to be inside your body, that's fine. Look for it there. I'm going to invite you to look for how deep beneath the skin the feeling seems to reach. And if you're only guessing where it is, your guess is good enough. Guess about how big it is, about how deep it is. Notice how things change inside of you because you're looking for it. A lot of times the pain changes. It either expands because you've been denying it for a very long time and you're starting to feel more of it. Uh, and finally, finally it's, it's surfacing or it's going to sort of shrink to what seems like it's right size. So what I'm asking you to do is keep your, turning your attention back to it. It's okay if your protective processes pop your awareness out and it's hard to actually focus on it and to even focus on looking for it. That's okay. Be like a good dance partner. You got twirled out, come on back in for another twirling out and breathe. 
breathe because your body is self-sensing, self-adjusting, self-healing. And when it comes to limerence, just like when you're healing from trauma and trauma bonding, uh, being able to be fully present in your body is part of the healing process. If things start to tremble or start to wobble or start to cause you to tear up or heat up inside of you, that's okay. That's part of the process. The way that it works when you're properly renegotiating your feelings is it goes from that state of tension and conflict to a state of activation where you do get some arousal. Your heart rate comes up. Sometimes there's heat. Sometimes there's nausea. Sometimes there's trembling. Sometimes there's tears. And then there's this calming, an opening up, a release of some of the pent up old survival energy and the emotions start to integrate. Make no mistake, you're designed to be a loving, uh, focusing, passionate, curious, compassionate human being. And as you turn your attention to uh, the things that tremble and hurt and cry, as long as they're tolerable, as long as it's not overwhelming to you, uh, the release of energy helps you regain your true nature as a self-sensing, self-healing being who can have marvelous obsessions and get marvelous results without being so hijacked without being so obsessed, without alienating the people that are most important to you, the attachment figures that matter to you in your life.